Afternoon everybody, Ron here, and I just got back from checking out the uh, Evil Dead remake earlier at the uh, Portsmouth 8 Cinema in town, and all I have to say is I loved it, and we've got another great remake on our hands, even though a lot of people have been bitching about remakes, and it's uh, basically the same story, even though the it is different from the original, which is a good thing, instead of it being shot by shot like the uh, Psycho remake, and the movie was produced by Sam Raimi and uh, Robert Tabert, Tapert and uh, Bruce Campbell, who unfortunately does not make a cameo in this remake, which I heard he does, but he doesn't, and... In the beginning, uh, we see this uh, girl being hunted down, who's possessed, who ends up being burned alive, and we cut to uh, modern times with uh, these uh, <coughs> young people vacationing in this cabin, and uh, <coughs> they're actually uh, holding, a, they're actually uh, preventing one of their friends from uh, doing drugs, who's got a nasty uh, drug habit, and her brother shows up, who... Uh, Halfway through the movie appears to be the uh, ash in this uh, movie. And anyway, um, <clears throat> the girl starts to freak out and then saying that she uh, smells something. And then uh, they start going, a couple of them start going down to the uh, bait, going down to the basement. And they see these like dead animals hanging, rotted dead animals hanging. And uh, one of them finds this book. And uh, the first one to get possessed is the uh, Mia character, I mean the girl with the drug problem. And there is one scene, there's a couple of parts that has, kind of reminds me of The Hidden. And I like that uh, in this one you can't burn the book. And uh, <clears throat> also uh, there's... Uh, in the book, it, in this one, in the book, it's mentioned that uh, there's three ways that you can kill someone possessed by burying them alive, fire, or bodily dismemberment, which doesn't happen in this movie. And uh, <clears throat> it's def <clears throat> and a lot of cringing effects in this movie, with where uh, the possessed Mia character uh, slices a razor or a pocket knife against her tongue, and then. There's a scene where uh, one of the uh, girls gets possessed after the Mia character uh, bites her arm, bites her hand, and then it starts getting infected, and then she ends up uh, cutting it off with an electric knife. And uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> definitely, there. Like I said, there is no CGI in this one at all, and it's. I'm just glad it. They didn't end up making it PG-13, and <clears throat> Sam Raimi did a good job of being behind this one, even though I think he needs to um, do another original horror film like he did with um, Drag Me to Hell. I mean, I heard that he's uh, behind the uh, upcoming Poltergeist, Poltergeist remake. All in all, uh, aside from the fact that uh, near the... Uh, the uh, near ending of the movie was a little far-fetched with the R SUV. <clears throat> Definitely not a bad sequel, and I mean, not a bad remake, and I will be picking this up when it comes out on DVD or Blu-ray. And um, so I give this one like uh, four stars. And uh, definitely a fun time at the movies for me. <clears throat> I'm not giving away a whole lot because uh, you'll have to see it for yourself and see what you really think of it. I also uh, saw the uh, trailer for The Conjuring today, which looks pretty good, and they also showed the trailer for uh, Hangover Part 3, which comes out next month. <clears throat> well, uh, that's been it for this uh, video, and... Hope you all get a chance to check out this good remake, uh, Rob Zombie's Lords of Salem, comes out on the 19th of April, which I definitely want to see. I just hope it plays in my area. <clears throat> Until then, this is Ron here saying over and out.